What's going on, everybody? Good evening. Uh, it is so good uh, to be back in the virtual sanctuary with you. Listen, I um, I hope you can hear me. Let me know you can hear me live. Um, I want you to uh, to let me know. Throw some throw some up in the chat. Throw some hearts up um, that we are. Uh, you can hear me loud and clear. But listen, um, so glad to be with you all. It is Wednesday. It is the first Wednesday of the month of November, and I, it seems like it's been a long time since I've been in this space. But it's so good to see you tonight. Um, do me a favor. Um, we've already had a little bit of technical difficulties with Facebook. So go on Facebook and share this link on YouTube. Uh, let them know we're on YouTube and on our website tonight to let them know, listen, we are live. We do have uh, tonight a special conversation, uh, uh, something a different, a different setting for our, our Wednesday empowerment. But I guarantee tonight, uh, just like our title is, you will be empowered tonight through this conversation. So listen, I want you to share. And as you share, do me a favor and speak to me. You know how we do in the chat. Um, you know the first thing I ask you to do is, is speak to me. But then I want you to share. I want you to like and I want you to tag. And while you're coming on in, um, let me say good evening to you. Good evening, Sister Yvetta Russell, uh, Sister Fatina Polk Reeves. Good evening to you. Uh, uh, Elder Ware, good evening to you all. Good evening to you all. Um, so good to have you with us. Listen, I want you to come on because, hey, Sister Drew, how you doing? I want you all to come on because um, we won't be before you long tonight, um, but we do want to do something uh, different. And so, listen, go ahead and share. Um, let people know I'm going to share myself. So that people know uh, where we're at so they can uh, know exactly that we're on YouTube tonight. Um, so let's see. OK, I just shared it myself. So good to see you all. So when you come in, sister, Brother Clyde Arrington, Sister Kim Arrington, good evening to you all. So good to see you all tonight. Sister Benita White, um, Brother James White, God bless you. Sister Lisa Nixon, um, God bless you all. Um, so good to uh, see you all tonight in this space. Um, Sister Barbara Anderson, God bless you. Sister DeAndrea Russell, uh, good evening to you. Uh, so good to see you tonight. Let's see here. Sister Mona, good to see you tonight, ma'am. So good to see you. Um, so listen again, when you come in, um, speak to me. Uh, like it, shag it uh, share it, tag it. Um, and uh, let's let people know, listen, we are live on Facebook and we are live on YouTube. Um, all right. All right. Let's see here. OK. All right. So this is what we're going to do. We don't want to belabor the hour. I'm going to pray. Um, I'm going to pray us in and then I want to introduce uh, somebody tonight who is going to. Uh, who is going to kind of lead our discussion tonight. She's going to have the floor. I'm giving control to her. And, and so I'm going to let her do her thing. I'm going to introduce you all to somebody who's um, who's a member of our church. And one thing about me, you know me, I like to use people in their gifts. And so listen, um, um, so listen, I want you to uh, get ready. So let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. Um, we thank you, oh God, for just another day. Um, Father, we just thank you for you being who you are. We thank you, oh God, for you being um, the almighty God that you are. And so, God, we just honor you this morning. We honor, we honor you uh, this evening because, God, you are a great God. And so, Father, we thank you, oh God, for your grace. We thank you, oh God, for your mercy. And, Father, we come before you tonight. Um, first, I've asked you to forgive us of all of our sins. And, Father, we pray tonight, oh Father, that you, as we talk tonight, as we discuss tonight, as we have a, transpar a transparency moment tonight, that, Father, you will edify this conversation. That, Father, your presence will be felt. Your spirit will be felt. That somebody tonight will be helped, will be aided. And somebody tonight will be blessed. And so, Father, we love you. Um, Father, we praise you. And, Father, we honor you. And we give your name praise. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Sister Charzel, <coughs> God bless you. Um, Sister Deborah Ryans, God bless you. So good to see you all. All right. Uh, Sister Claire Kenzie, God bless you and the whole Cleansy clan. Um, Tristan, Sienna, uh, Brother Sam, Precious, Mason, good evening to you all. Uh, always, we always give honor to uh, First Lady, First Lady Octavia Johnson. Uh, thank God for her, uh, uh, always for her presence, always for her prayers and my, and my lovely kids. So tonight, we, as you can see, we're in a different setting tonight. Uh, we're going to have a conversation. Uh, I wanted to do something. 
tonight, uh, since this is uh, officially my first night back uh, from a sabbatical, I wanted to do something different. Uh, uh, offer, offer you uh, insight into a little bit into me, a little bit of transparency of what uh, of what sabbatical look like. Uh, I have um, a special guest who is um, who's not a stranger to me, but for some of y'all, she may be a stranger because she sits in the back, she sneaks in and she sneaks out. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to brag on her tonight as her pastor because uh, you never know who's in your midst. And we have great talent. We have great gifts. And Sister Danica Hill tonight, um, she is uh, she is a, uh, a journalist, a reporter mm -hmm. uh, for Channel 10, right? Channel 3. Channel 3. My bad. My bad. Whoa. Channel 3. <laughs> Channel three. Um, she is for Channel 3. And she uh, and she is a blessing. Um, she is every time I see her, she is sunshine. Uh, she has a great smile that lights up every room. And so tonight, um, I thought who better to lead this conversation than to somebody who is a pro. <laughs> and so tonight, Danica Hill is with us. She's going to ask some questions. She's we're going to have she's going to lead our conversation. We're just going to talk tonight candidly about God, about faith, about things. And I, and I told her, I said, I didn't give her I didn't prep her. Um, and so I'm kind of nervous because she, you know, I don't know the question she's going <laughs> to ask, but this is something that I want to do. Uh, and I'm going to ask her some questions as well so that you'll get to know her um, and kind of hear her story. But uh, Tanika, uh, good to see you tonight. It is good to see you. And I thank you for letting me have this opportunity to sit down with you. Most definitely. I can tell you when I sit in the aisle, I'm like, okay, I want to ask him this. I want to <laughs> ask him that. So I've been waiting for the opportunity. Okay. Okay. Anyway, okay. So, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. and listen, uh, yes, she's leading this conversation, but there are some questions that you may want to know tonight. Um, you can put them in the chat. We'll answer them tonight. But, uh, Tanika, the floor is yours. All right. Well, let's get into it. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Yeah, uh, feeling rested? I'm feeling very rested. I was very intentional on my time, and so uh, I'm feeling very rested. I'm feeling good, rejuvenated, ready to, uh, to finish out this year strong. Just talking about uh, what this break looked like for right. you um, and what that time meant. And, and for you, it was really kind of, it seems kind of like rooting, like going back home yeah. and, and getting around people um, that can bring peace back to you. Right. 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 Um, that kind of leads me to another one of the questions that I did have on my list. Do okay. you ever find yourself questioning why me mm. why am i in this position mm. why did god put me here wow <laughs> <laughs> um that is that is a oh man yes to answer that yes um and i say that because um being a pastor is very weighty right um do i love it I love it because it's my passion, right? I love people. I love God's people, right? I love to see people. I always say it like this. I love to see a person go from point A to point B, to see something inside of a person and be a part of their journey to pull it out, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there are times where I do sit down sometimes and say, God, like, what was it or what is it about me? that you chose me, right? Humbled by it, right? I wouldn't, I'm very humbled that he would choose me. That's why I say every Sunday, uh, it's never lost with me. Out of all you could have chose, you, you chose me. Um, but sometimes I do um, because it is a burden, right? I had my late pastor, um, Pastor Walter, used to always say every Sunday, the blessing and the burden of preaching. Mm -hmm. um, the blessing and the burden. The blessing is I have the opportunity to lead somebody to Christ. The blessing is I have the opportunity to show somebody this marvelous light, but the burden is, is that I have to show people the light. Mm -hmm. The burden is, is that I have to always be the example. The burden is I have to always be on, right? And that's the burden of it. So there are times where, because I'm different, right? Like I shared with you earlier before the cameras were rolling while we were just talking, um, I'm different, right? When I came to this church, when the Lord was like, this is your assignment, I was like, oh, God. Like, and, and it was because I'm non-traditional, right? Mm -hmm. I was raised traditional, but I'm non-traditional because I, I really, like, I really studied and, and my eyes have been opened and, the, and, the, and God has revealed things to me, right? And so it was kind of a, a, of a, a, for me, of something I really had to get back into that God had called me into a space like this, right, um, to do, to bring change. Mm -hmm. And so, so there are times where it gets heavy. There are times where I even question, like, God, 
am I still the, job, the guy for the job? Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like God, like you know, you know, do I go another round, or this is where I, I find another another venture, right? Do it, do something different. But there's always that, con like I said, that confirmation, mm -hmm. right? Well, being, you know, my uh, one of my good friends that we was raised literally from elementary, middle school, high school together, that he would say, "You're doing what we thought you would do." That was that, that in the first week of sabbatical. That was that first mm -hmm. confirmation, like you in the right spot, right? You're doing what you're called to do. Yeah, there are times where I do question and say, God, but there's always, and I would say it like this, this church, y'all, <laughs> always confirm to me, you in your right spot. Yeah, This is why he chose you. That when I see breakthrough, when I see deliverance, when I see people walking in their calling and their anointing, right? That's that's what does it for me. So there, yes, there, because I'm human, mm -hmm. right? Right. And, and I think that that's you know, Danique, if I'm honest, mm -hmm. I think that that's sometimes the frustrating part that people forget that I'm human. Mm -hmm. That nothing just because I'm called, nothing. My DNA didn't change. I didn't get superpowers, right? So I bleed like everybody else bleeds. I cry like everybody else cries. I, sometimes I don't feel adequate, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. um, my confidence is I'm human, right? And that's sometimes what weighs you is that even though you're human, you always have to show up, yeah. right? And that's, so that's, that's the biggest thing, yeah. So in that, you mentioned the blessing and the burden. That's right. another question that I had on the list and even more with like how you were mentioning our conversations prior to the cameras rolling. Right. Um, we both grew up in the church. Right. I have parents that have uh, been leaders in the right. church. That in itself is a pressure. Man. So you grow up your whole life right. dealing with that pressure right. of being a kid of leaders in the church. Right. And now you're a leader of the church. Right. How do you continue to deal with this pressure that, that you felt your whole life, essentially? So I'm a, oh, man. Um, <laughs> these are good. Um, so background, I started preaching at nine, right? Wow. So I went through, um, I went through a phase. Um, and, and when I say I went through a phase, I went through a phase that when I started discovering girls, mm. um, that um, ministry was on the back burner, right. right? I just, I wanted to be me, but not really realizing, understanding, hey, this is your ministry, this is your DNA. Um, and so the pressure of it is, is really like that was the that was when pressure first started, right? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, a, I'm my dad's a deacon, my mom's a deaconess, like they're very heavily in church. I am a preacher. I sing like all of that. That's just pressure, right? And so it was hard because the first thing my pastor had to tell my parents because they're like, "Hey, well, our kids are preaching at nine years old. Like, well, how do we do this?" He said, "Let him be a kid. Mm -hmm. I never forget that. Let him play sports. Let him do what he's been doing. Let him be a kid because he still has to." be able to grow and to and so I had my bumps right I took my bumps and it was and it was hard because you taking your lumps in the eye it, mm -hmm. I mean in the eye of the public mm -hmm. right that it's people that uh looking at you and pointing like to the point and I tell my wife this all the time I know the Lord had to take me out of Houston mm. because the way I was growing up right I was going to make a mockery of my ministry before it even started, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, how I deal with the pressures is number one, even now, I have great outlets, right? I have great people around me because that's one thing that I was very intentional about is tightening up my circle and sabbatical. Mm -hmm. Who are the people that when um, I just want to be human for a moment, who are the people that I can trust? call and confide in when i feel the pressure right when when i have a human moment who are those people that will pray with me right who will who will carry me through who will be those people and that's one thing that i'm big on right it's relationships yeah because that's the biggest thing because it is pressure like i'll be honest with you and it's not bragging but it's it this is part of the burden right mm -hmm. that i never shall forget uh early on being in sacramento we've been here for five years right i've been pastor for two was passing another uh, on uh, on staff pass at another church, and so me and my wife are going to a restaurant, and we're going to this restaurant. I've been wanting to go forever. I'm hungry, um, so I said, "Man, don't nobody know us. Let's go sit at the bar. Mm -hmm. Not getting no drinks. That was not our plan. We was gonna eat, talk, you know, have a good time, and that was it." So we go to the bar. The first thing happens is a lady says, "Oh my God, I know you." First off, you know. 
I'm married to a sister. So now, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, so the first thing I'm all like, man, you know, I don't know her and like my, I'm about to get decked, right? right? But then she was like, you're Pastor Jay. And my wife is like, she's like, oh, she goes in a straight like protective mode mm -hmm. because she's like, man, my husband, me and him, we're going to sit at a bar. We're not drinking, mm -hmm. but the, the optics, right? right? And so what she does, she's like, oh, you know, it's crowded in here. She kind of goes in interference. And so at that moment, it was like, okay, we can't go. We, it, anytime we go somewhere and set, we got to make sure we get a table. Like, mm. and it's even now, like it's, that was five years ago now. Um, and again, not bragging, but that's just where it is. It's yeah. nowhere I can go. Um, like where people are like, Hey, you're pastor Jay. Hey, we you know, I see you, man. I appreciate you. So for me, the pressure is when I leave my house, it's always, Hey, make sure number one, which, which is a good thing, checking my heart to mm -hmm. make sure I'm in the right posture. I'm about to do the right things, right? Because there's there's not too many places I can go in the city mm -hmm. and nobody knows me, which is a good and a bad thing, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so so that's that pressure, right? Having those right people around you, having those people around you that understand that, hey, like who you are in God and who you are to these people, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's how I manage the pressure. And I thank God for my wife because she always keeps things in perspective for me. Yeah. I tell people all the time, like, um, there's people that come, oh man, you're great, you're a great word, my wife. And she does it not like in a mean way or she's, but this is who you are. I was like, how was work today? Oh, it was good. Mm. I was like, that's it? Like, right. I mean, like yeah. but like that's, and my wife has always been the one that's kept me even keel, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because no matter where I'm at, no matter what I do, I still got to do trash. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, how I deal with the pressure is understanding, hey, like, you know, I, I have a great team, I have great people around me. Um, um, and then that's, that's how I deal with the pressures. You mentioned a lot here and then that was in the line of my questioning too. Right. Um, your wife, I yeah. mean, when I first met her, I'm like, oh, she's got an amazing spirit. I mean, yeah. we didn't have a long conversation, right. but it was like instantly right. a great person for her. Um, uh, also not here from SAC, but to come here with you, mm. um, what are the conversations between you guys look, especially when, you know, you mentioned, you know, you're human as yeah. well. Um, what are those day to day conversations look like when you've got all these pressures and pressures that she didn't ask for? Man, <laughs> <laughs> Danica, um, that I'm going to tell you, um, coming here was a, a total move of, of God and mm -hmm. of faith. Um, usually when we make moves together, it's, it's team moves, right? Mm -hmm. It's both of us on agreement. Both of us has fasted. We prayed. God spoke. We're good, right? This was the first move that when, um, I was called, I, I knew it. I had asked God for specific signs and he had answered all those signs. And so I was like, Hey, this is the assignment. And for her, she was like, ah, and, and it wasn't like she didn't, it wasn't, it was because we always choose our churches. Every church that we have gone to, we started, so our first church I pastored, we started that together, right? Mm -hmm. We started that. Um, coming to the church that we were, I was previously a staff pastor, we had joined the church before I became a staff pastor. Mm -hmm. So every church we have worshiped together since we've been married for, for almost 50 years, we have chosen. This has been the first church that chose us, right? And so that was something to get used to because we didn't choose it. Mm -hmm. It chose us, mm -hmm. right? And so that was something that she was just like, man, you know, but, and, and it was her uh, having a great people around her that, that would say, hey, you know, God's going to confirm it, which he has, mm -hmm. right? And which my wife looks at it today and she was like, man, I'm so glad that you listened to God and that you didn't listen to me, right? Yeah. You didn't listen to, because she was so concerned, well, I want to hear from God too. Like, mm -hmm. I want him to speak to me too, like, you know, and so. This was one of the ones where she really had to really depend on me, mm. right? And trust me. And so even in our day-to-day, -day, our conversations, because there are times when I'm human, right? right? And I have those moments where I'm crying, where the pressure is on me. And those conversations, it's never, because I'll be honest, there are some times where, you know, human side, you'd be like, man, I can walk away from this, right. right? She never gives me an out. Wow. And it's so great because I know if she did, I walk away. Yeah. If she was like, yeah, walk away, we, I got it, yeah. you. We cool. Yeah. But God always uses her in every moment to be like, I know how you feel. 
but you can't walk away. Mm -hmm. She says that every time you can't walk away. Yeah. Like this is your assignment. This is what God calls you to. And it means the most when I have her sitting there mm -hmm. every Sunday because it's like she got my back. Mm -hmm. She pushing me. Like you in this assignment, we in this assignment. Mm -hmm. Like my kids, we're all heavy. Like we know we serve here because we have a rule. Yeah. Wherever we go, we serve together. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be that family that's about us. Mm -hmm. We're going to be that family where if, if if there's if there's things that need to be done, we're going to do it, too. We're going to put our, our, our sleeves up and we're going to work with the people. Right. Because that's just who we are. Yeah. And so that is. Uh, and I'll be honest. That was one of the things I prayed for mm -hmm. at 21 when I knew this was the route. Like I knew I knew pastor um, was on me. It had been confirmed. Um, it, my late pastor, Pastor Houston, had had. It was prophesied multiple times mm -hmm. that, hey, you're going to pastor. Uh, didn't want it, right? right. It wasn't something I wanted, but it was something that, that was God gave to me. And and I, the first thing I asked for in ministry at 21, when I knew it was time for me to really submit to God, I said, I need a wife. Mm -hmm. um, Paul says in the Bible, and it's very evident, he says, I would wish you would be like me because Paul was never married. But he said, um, if you can't, I'd rather for you to marry than to burn. I said, well, that's me. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, that's a transparent moment. Yeah. Like, hey, that's that's me. I'm human. I know me. I know my flesh. And so I asked for a wife and God gave me more than what I asked for, mm -hmm. more than what I could comprehend, more than what I could have thought. Right? right. What I could imagine. He gave me somebody that wasn't raised in church. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't one of my I wanted somebody that was in church right. and who knew. But because. It was so refreshing to have somebody that wasn't in, in in church like that, but knew God and loved mm -hmm. God. So for her, it's all about God, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things I tell I tell people all the time, man, I wish I had the capability that she has. Like where when we first started going to church together, she would leave immediately out of church and go straight to the car. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> why you ain't speaking up? She was like, because that word was so good. I didn't want nobody to taint that word. Wow. I didn't want no conversation wow. shit, yeah. conversation to taint that word. So I wanted to sit in it because that word was for me. And I was like, man, like, yeah. I wish I had that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's one of the things that I tell people all the time is that she's authentic, mm -hmm. right? Like, she's quiet. But, like, you know, she's from D.C. So you, if mm -hmm. you know anything about D.C. people, like, uh, they're quiet, uh, but they're loyal. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They rocks with you, right? If they rock with you, they rock with you till the wheels fall off. Yeah. And that's one of the best things that God could ever gave me um, was somebody like her who sees things differently, which I love. We were raised differently, mm -hmm. right? We we come from two different backgrounds. She was raised predominantly black. I was raised predominantly white in, in a mixture. So we have the best of both worlds. So that's how she does it for me. That's how she's there to support me, to be kind of help me release those pressures. I love that. I love, I mean, if I didn't already love y'all relationship, <laughs> that, that just adds more to it. Um, we talked, you know, too, about growing up in the church and, and being raised, um, especially in the South, you know, right. coming from a, a different uh, area. When you came into this congregation, now I know that you were, you know, a member of, or a member of, but yeah, you you just visited here first before you took nah. on. You were a member here. No, so um, oh man, um, <laughs> yeah, ow. <laughs> so I was like I said, I was previously pastor, uh, right. on, on, on staff pastor at another church, and I was asked to apply oh. uh, more than once, and mm. I had I had um, and I said this, and I always say this, and I preface this: it had nothing to do with the people nor the church; it had everything to do with I didn't want to pastor again. Mm. right like I really like I was like mm, mm -hmm. like because again that's not something I desire right mm -hmm. that's not something mm -hmm. I I chase after so I was asked that around about the third time the Holy Spirit had to convict me and was like how can you say no right to something I put inside of you this is not your gift right you're a steward over this gift mm -hmm. like this is not yours this is not mm -hmm. your anointing and so I had to say okay God well I, I submitted and so I once I submitted it the ball started rolling in and then it went through the whole process. And I'll tell you this. Um, I tried to trick God, right? I tried to trick God this assignment because um, this church was very, uh, very strict on saying, hey, we uh, we want to have two candidates, right, to bring to the church for them to choose mm -hmm. from, right? And so I said, okay, cool. All right, God, <laughs> I got to be the only candidate. Right. I said, because if not, if I go to the church with another guy, I'm going to pull my name out the hat. And be like, y'all can have them because, you know, because I don't want to, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I'm going to get out. 
Nah. Within a month, mm. he dropped out. And mm. the chairman of the deacon board called me and said, hey, uh, you're the only one we present to the church. This was like in November. I, as they voted in February. I literally laughed, went upstairs, told my wife, this is our assignment. She was like, how did you know today? I said, because this mm. is what I asked the Lord for. And the Lord answered like this. And because he answered like this, yeah. I know that we're going here. So that's that's how we got here. Don't you love when the Lord work like that? When you try to <laughs> be sneaky. Listen, and be like, when I tell you, you thought. When I <laughs> tell you, I, I, I do. Like, you know, yeah. try to be sneaky, try to find my way out. Um, I love how God does it, right? Mm -hmm. I love, but one thing I love, and I always tell people this, I love how he confirms it, mm -hmm. right? Because there are times when even me as a pastor, um, I just want to be sure I hear his voice. Mm -hmm. I don't care mm -hmm. which route we go, right? I don't care left or right. Like I'm, I'm down with you, God. Like right. that's, that's how I am. Like I'm not, I don't have no dog in the fight no more, but I just want to make sure I hear you. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing for me that I love when he confirms it, I'm like, okay, God, I'm cool because I just want to hear you. I never want to make a move that God hasn't approved. Yeah. Um, that's just where I am in my life. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be out here. You know, I'm too old to be making these moves, mm -hmm. um, you know, that God ain't, God ain't approved. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't have time for that. Like anything that God approves, I'm moving with it. Where, where, where it is, wherever it is, where, wherever I got to go, as long as he approves it. Right. So, that's it. Right. Um, on that note, when you first came here to this church, I know I remember my first experience at this church and I was like, <laughs> okay, this is, is not home. It's not the South. Right. But they praise a lot like we do. Right. What was your initial reaction being in this congregation and seeing how they praise here and how they worship God? Was it was it comforting? Did it feel like home? What did it feel like for so you? So I'm going to tell you it felt like home. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you why you get So a lot of the people here are from the South. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the things I found out, that a lot of our people had moved here because of the military uh, from Alabama, from Mississippi. And so that a lot of them, they stayed. When the base closed, they, they just stayed in California, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why you have a little bit of that South flavor. Like our media, uh, our media director, Sister D, she's, you know, Louisiana, right? Yeah. And so you got people who have that that South in them, mm -hmm. and they're just here. And so that's what I found out because I'm all like, hey, like this kind of remind me yeah. uh, from the South, like, right. you know, where I'm from. And so um, that was that was the, probably the most encouraging thing, mm -hmm. that it felt home. Um, and not just from that, but just how loving these people are. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would venture to say this is probably the most loving church, mm -hmm. um, and that and I could be partial because I'm the pastor, but um, I have experienced it right, and not not just for myself, but how uh, when when tragedies hit our church, mm -hmm. how this church corrals around everybody and literally uh, just isolates them and puts uh, just puts love all around them and just you know just there and so. For me, that's why it feel, feels home because it feels like love, right? Yeah. It just feels homey, right? People here, like, you know, you got people here, they'll adopt you in a heartbeat. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll be adopted soon. Oh, I know? have been. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like, you know, people adopt you. People, you know, bring you over for dinner. They love mm -hmm. you. And that's and it's genuine, right? It's not fake. It's not phony. Um, They're real genuine lovers. And so that's why it kind of feels home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, and so for you, that, that was a, a reason that, you know, you wanted to be here more? So I'm going to tell you. <laughs> And I'll be honest, uh, that was one of the reasons. Okay. I, I would say that was one of the reasons because going through the interview process uh, with this church, like uh, once I first met the people, like they were very friendly, mm -hmm. right? Um, after, like I did, man, I, whew, I did probably about three interviews here. And so one was with the um, the actual committee. Uh, then the second, it was with the deacon and trustees. And the third was with the whole church. So we're talking about this whole church filled with people. You know, they coming out that night. They want to know. Right. And so they 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 grilling me, right? Yeah. They got about two hours of just grilling me, of asking me questions. But afterwards, they came up to me, came mm -hmm. up to my wife and just, uh, you know, gave love. And was like, hey, like, you know, we we like what you're, you know, what you are offering. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, we are. It already felt like family then. And then, yeah. and then when I started preaching and teaching for them, because I preached and teach for them for a few months, mm -hmm. then it started to feel like, okay, this is home, yeah. right? You know, because, because how they, you know, how they responded to the mm -hmm. word, how they responded to me, and so yeah, so that's how I felt. Yeah. Another thing that we've kind of already touched on, but I want to get kind of a whole answer on um, tradition. Okay. All right. I know that you say that you are a non-traditional pastor. Okay. However, 
I feel like when I come in this church, there are a lot of things yeah. about this church that are still very traditional. Right. I grew up in a traditional <laughs> oh, black yeah, yeah. South church, right. Antioch Baptist Church. So right. give them a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's a lot of things here that are still very traditional. Is that, is it because that you were raised in a traditional church that you feel like there's some things that you can't break away from? Okay, okay. Or is it things that you still just haven't been able to change yet at this church? We going there tonight? <laughs> is that what we doing, Danika? I mean, okay. All right. I've been nice. Those so <laughs> last few questions was nice. We, now, okay, we thought, we thought, okay. <laughs> um, man, so. I was I would say it like this. Um, I'm a big stickler for everything being about God. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes tradition can become your God. Mm -hmm. And we lean more to the tradition than we lean to it being about God. And I'm I told that line very finely, right? I told it very finely for the simple reason is because like I always want to be in the will of God. And so there are some things that uh, are coming up that uh, I've, as I spent time in, in my sabbatical time um, with God, uh, there are some things that we're going to we're going to look at. Right. Okay. We're going to prayerfully look at and tackle. Um, there are some things that of who we are, it's our identity. You know, you you want to keep some of those things. Right. right. Um, because I always say uh, as long as it's promoting God, promoting these three things, the light, love, and change, we're going to do it, mm -hmm. right? And so there are some things that we still do that, you know, that we'll still st stay true to, but there are some things that prayerfully, um, as we grow and as we continue to go, that um, we'll, we'll uh, kind of get out of those things. And mm -hmm. the reason why I say that is because um, there is a movement that God wants us to move to. Um, as I see our church, as I see how our church is moving, as I see how our church is going, um, um, I see the times, right? Right. Um, and see, um, one of the things I came to the church, and first thing I, I told, well, recently I told our leaders, like, this is an attractive church. This is not just a a, a, a family church like it once was, mm -hmm. a community church like it once was. This is a family church, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things that, um, not a family, not just a family church, but this is an attractive church, mm -hmm. meaning, where do you drive from? What, uh, downtown. So you live downtown, right? Mm -hmm. You pass multiple churches. Yeah. So you go from downtown to here. Mm -hmm. That means this house is offering you something that you love, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have people that drive as far as Elk Grove. We got people that drive uh, over an hour. Like over, and I never forget when they join. They came one time and joined, and they've been consistent. I'm like, man, they drive over an hour one Ooh. way to get to church because it it they're like, what we get here. Yeah. It's what we need, mm -hmm. right? And so my thing is, I want to make sure that we get rid of all the, the pomp and circumstance to get to the nitty gritty, mm -hmm. right? Let's get to God. Let's mm -hmm. get to why you're here. Danica comes here from, from, from downtown. So my goal is when I come here, hey, we ain't got time for fluff, mm -hmm. right? Because you come here to see God. Yeah. And so my goal every Sunday and 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 one day i'll let you get a sneak peek right because mm. okay, i'm liking this i really am liking this <laughs> get a sneak peek because what my sunday morning looks like mm -hmm. right my sunday morning doesn't start at 10 here it starts like at seven o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. like and i'm not an early person anybody right. would tell you i'm but sunday mornings without a, without an alarm clock without fail seven o'clock i'm up feet on the ground i'm Praise music in my ears. Let's go to work, mm -hmm. right? Let's get it done. Because to me, going to work here is 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 again you seeing God. You getting with your Philip. You getting your deliverance. You get laying those burdens down. So for me, it ain't about everything else. Mm -hmm. And so some of those things that for me is, and I and I, don't get me wrong. And I and I think this is a great conversation. Uh, a great question that leads to a greater conversation, right? Mm -hmm. About the black church, right? Mm -hmm. That some of the things that we've done and, and understanding that some of the things that we've gotten traditionally was because of slave times. Right. Right. And so when you do that research, you understand why we do certain things, right? right? And so for me as a pastor, I've, I took the line because I also have to remember I do have, I have multi-generations in this right. church. I have 
So I have my millennials, mm -hmm. I have my young people, I have my, you know, gen, I don't, you know, all that stuff. Like, you know, I have mm -hmm. my 30, right. you know, I have my 30 yeah. and 40, I have my, I have every generation represented yeah. in this house, which is a blessing. Yeah. And so for me, I'm not trying to build walls, I'm trying to build bridges, mm -hmm. right? And so that has been the goal since I've been here to build a bridge for, catch this, for everybody to, to come across, right? Yeah. Because I think sometimes we forget about when we build bridges, we think people are just supposed to come to us. Mm -mm. Bridges are so that we can come sometimes and mm -hmm. that people can come to us sometimes, mm -hmm. right? And so that is the thing that for me is is something I'm trying to do. It's not an either or, mm -hmm. but an answer. I like that. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? This mm -hmm. I'm, I, I want this to be, and God wants this to be an and church, mm -hmm. right? We do this and. It's not just, oh, we only do this. Right. Right. Now we do this and mm -hmm. because it is a church where you can be able to get a little bit of that home, but you make sure at the end of the day, it's all God. Mm -hmm. That's that's the focus. That And I really like that answer, too, because for me, that was one of the things because I visited a couple other churches here in SAC okay. and, and I was I mean. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be transparent. I googled black churches in Sacramento. Okay. <laughs> so a couple of them, they were just they were super old, and I was like, okay, this you know I want that tradition, right. but I don't. I am a young person, right. so like I don't want that to be that. And so when I came here, I'm like, okay, there's an older generation. Right. There's people my age. Right. They're praising together, right. like. So I, I think, you know, that's the perfect answer for, you know, trying to find a way um, to combine this, because that was going to be one of my follow up questions okay. in the changing, in the the switching from non-traditional. Are yeah. you fearful of losing those hard um, old school, you know, church members? Right. Or, and has that happened already? Yeah. Can, uh, I, can we talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We might talk now. Now, uh, I, I have had uh, some of our uh, some of our older members, right? I know that was one of the first things that was asked to me was, Pastor, uh, you're young, mm -hmm. right? You're younger than us. You know, some of from my older members, they uh, they're old enough to be uh, my my parents, my grandparents, right. right? And so they always question, like, you know, Pastor, like, what are you gonna do for us, mm -hmm. right? Is there a place for us? Uh, and I and I always said yes, right. Uh, one of the things I instituted here was our church mothers, mm -hmm. right, because I wanted them to know that there's a place for you, right. You may not, you may can't usher, you may your knees may be bad, mm -hmm. right, but you can pray, mm -hmm. you can give wisdom, mm -hmm. right. You don't, you don't need, I just need, I just need your mm -hmm. mouthpiece for that, right. And so um, I have had some older members that came in that were kind of uh leery mm -hmm. of, of of me number one not from here mm -hmm. right so they were a little leery because they're like you know we don't really know him we don't mm -hmm. really know his family like you know and they were they were leery and so but what i one thing i did was i spent time with them yeah right i spent time with them because i wanted them to know like hey um i i said it to one of our deacons who um was like you know pastor you know a lot of changes and one thing i said to him i said deek i said this is a great ship mm -hmm. that has been sailing for over 70 years. My job is not to tear down the ship. Right. Ship is good. Got good, great bones. Mm -hmm. But my job is to update some of the sofas, mm -hmm. some of the towers, right? Some of the satellites, um, some of the, you know, some to make it, to make it, to bring it up to date. Mm -hmm. Not changing the foundation, mm -hmm. not changing the structure, right? But just adding some things so at the end of the day, it's like, oh, okay, yeah. right? Just, just so that's that was one of my things. That's one of the things that I did when it came to because listen, because one thing about our, our older generation, mm -hmm. they at the age, you know, they don't care about, you know, they they don't bite their tongue. No, so we ain't got to be sweet. They are gonna tell you exactly <laughs> yeah. how they feel, and right. so and so that was one of the things that um that uh they did. So yeah, that's yeah. how I did it. Yeah. All right, I'll start to wrap it up for okay. you, but um. Another one of the things that I wanted to ask, something that we kind of talked about very, very beginning. Um, you know, once you, you're on assignment, here. Okay. Um, once that assignment is completed, you, you know, and you see the vision of this church has been right. fulfilled, what do you see for yourself? <sighs> what do you see for yourself in God's eyes? In God's eyes, yeah. okay. Um, so one thing I say, because what the... Um, jokingly that that uh, a lot of our members and, and y'all can y'all can talk back to us <laughs> y'all can answer some ask some questions and y'all can comment um because a lot of our members would say 
oh, you ain't going nowhere. Now you, mm -hmm. you, you here for, mm -hmm. you here for the next 30. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I always say this, I don't know what God's plan is. Right. Mm -hmm. When I left Virginia after starting the church within four and a half years, Simon was up and that was something I had to grieve. Um, and I say that because I had planned to stay forever. Mm. Um, because we started it, and so it was like we had bought a house, everything was, we were solid, right? Four and a half years, God says, okay. And we were there in Virginia over, over six years. And so God says, now it's time to come out here. And I was like, and I was upset, right? Yeah. I was upset because I was like, man, didn't know what was up, up the head of the road, didn't know that this was my future, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, but when I, when I look at it, because, you know, my plan is, and I tell my wife all the time, like, my plan is I don't want to be that pastor that dies pastoring, right? There's mm -hmm. more there's more to me. There's mm -hmm. more in me. Um, and so I always look at, like, hey, like, I've been preaching since I was nine. So we're talking about almost, you know, almost 30 years of preaching. Right. Right? And so, like, there will be a time where I, I would hope the Lord would be like, okay, now you can, you, can, uh, you know, bring. Because I would like to be in the place, and this is me, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to be in the place where while wherever I met, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And while we're doing this, I will bring a Joshua on and allow him to take over. And you can make me pastor emeritus. I ain't got to preach all the time like, mm -hmm. and just guide him. Mm -hmm. But there's other things I want to do. Right? You're in sack? <laughs> Whatever. And, I'm, yeah. and, I, and I'll be honest with you. I'm submitted to wherever he wants mm -hmm. me. If God says you're here for the next 30 years, I'm going to be here rocking for the next 30 yeah. years. If God says not, wherever God says. I'm not... I put it like this. I'm not, I don't treat this like a job. Mm -hmm. You know, at the job, you know, you start putting your application. Right. Because that's not how I do yeah. ministry, right? It always has to be like, again, how I got this church. I didn't put in a resume, right? It was, it was just God, mm -hmm. right? It was God at the end of, because to truth be told, they were pretty much done with their process. Mm -hmm. I came at the ninth hour and that's how it, that's how it played out. So for me, whatever God wants, if, if we here for the next day, we rocking, right? right? We gonna right. rock until the Lord says otherwise, but there are other things I wanna do. There's more to me than just preaching and teaching, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so there's some other things that I wanna do. I'm actually working on some things now. Um, you know, uh, you know, working on uh, some, you know, I guess I could say it, working on a podcast. Okay. Um, and so uh, First Lady and I are actually working on a podcast. Um, it's been something that's been, you know, a lot of people have been asking mm -hmm. for it. Um, we just couldn't, we just had to find the time, right? Mm -hmm. And so one thing that's sabbatical was just kind of chilling at that time. So that's one thing to look forward to is a, is a podcast with me and First Lady. Uh, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be dope. And I think yeah. it's going to be dope because it's going to be us just being us, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about just church and stuff like that. It's going to be us. You'll be able to see our personality, mm -hmm. how we interact, how we talk. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and then I got some other things um, I'm working on, um, a devotional. I'm um, a book, and oh, so nice. I'm working on that too. Uh, that's been something that the Lord has given me that I had to find time again mm -hmm. to sit down and just write it right. And so that's something that I'm working on. But there's more. There's more to me, right? Um, I like to consult. I like to, you know, there's other things that people don't know mm -hmm. that I do on, uh, on a hush hush, right? Yeah. And so that's one thing for me. I always have other things rolling. Um, I'm not a one trick pony, right? Um, and so that's that's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I got some things for you. Oh, you got some things for I me. Got some things oh, okay. For you. Ooh, okay. I got some things for you. So, um, you're from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Born and right? raised. Born and raised. Um, and so, um, one of the things I want to ask you because you've been out here for a year, mm -hmm. right? Um, I follow you. <laughs> <laughs> I follow you. Oh, uh, um, how has the transition been? Um, because where were you before you moved out here? I was in Tulsa. You was in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. So how has the transition been um, here to a new station at Channel 3? How's the tra The transition, it's interesting because okay. this is the first time. So I, I started in Tulsa, moved to Texas for a year, then moved back to Tulsa, and then moved here. So I, my only experience is Tulsa, or is okay. Oklahoma, Texas. Okay. Um, so moving out here halfway across the country, no family really yeah. or anything like that. Getting to know people and understanding how Sacramento, Northern California operates um, has been a really hard adjustment. Right. Um, that's why my pastor back at home was like, you got to find a church. Right. You know, once you can get in there, find people that genuinely love you, you'll be all right. right. Um, my job, though, is the best job that I've ever worked. Okay. At. 
I wish that, you know, I don't, I don't see myself forever being a California girl. Okay. However, I wish I could take my job with me everywhere I go. Right, so right, I right. love my job. The city um, in Northern California has been a, a really hard adjustment for me, okay. just being far from family. I mean, I, I went from editing my stories at my mama's house okay. to now she can't understand the time difference. Gotcha, gotcha, so, gotcha. You know, I got it's, you. it's been a really hard adjustment, but I do love my job. I love what I do. Okay. I got, um, I got two more. Okay. Um, how have you, how have you dealt with the pressures, um, of doing news, uh, doing stories that affect you personally, right? And that, uh, that kind of weigh on you and probably after the camera is done, like, how do you deal with that, um, with trying to leave it at mm -hmm. that site or leave it at that computer and not take it home with you, right? How do you deal with that? It's different here. And okay. I, I really related to you when you said, like, I, I had to leave. Yeah. Houston. I had to leave Tulsa. Got you. I grew up in not like, I grew up in North Tulsa, which is the hood. Right, <laughs> and, right. Um, now, being a, or being a reporter there, that was the hardest. Right. Because I'm reporting on, uh, there were homicides of kids that I had babysat. Oh, wow. There were, you know, one of the biggest police shootings out there happened a block away from my church. They ran to my church. Wow. We were in choir rehearsal when okay. it happened. Like, there's a... And so for me to know that side and then to get on TV and pretend like I didn't know that side right, right. hurt. It okay. was so hard. Um, and the, the boss that I had at the time was not from, she was from Baltimore. She was not um, understanding of the fact that I, I'm really from here. These are really my people. Right. And for me to get on here, and, and I jokingly say all the time, I feel like a snitch, you gotcha. know? Right, like, right, yeah. you know, you want me to get on here and be like, oh, this is gang related when I know yeah. them, they mama, they grandma, and all of them, and they not in the gang. But right, you, right. you want to make it that way. So, that that really took a toll on me and I felt really bad and I, I felt like I um was kind of letting my city down in a way. But then then I got this job offer and came out here and everybody from back home was like, you know, it, it was your time to go. Gotcha. We love what you did yeah. out there. Here it's I'm I'm because I'm not from here, okay. I am able to disconnect a little bit better. But then there are those days when it's like a real I mean, I was telling you, my little brother is 24. Gotcha. And so when I see situations out here when there's a 24-year-old or something like that that has happened, I, I immediately think about my little brother. Gotcha. I immediately think about them. And so for me, it is a call home. It's like what you said. Um, and like Thanksgiving, my family's planning on coming out here because I need that reset. Right, right. I need Like, yes, this is, you know, it's nice to have people around. Right. I love my job. I love y'all, right. but I need my my yeah. my real roots. I need <laughs> yeah, my people yeah, yeah. to come. And so my mama, you know, she loves the news, so she gets a call every other day. I'm <laughs> like, Mama, you won't believe, right? You know what happened, and that, and then, and then prayer, and then it's, yeah. you know, I, I my thing, the way I I try to leave it is God. I hope, you know, I I told this story the mm -hmm. way these people want the story to be told. Okay. Um, it, none of this has anything to do with me. Gotcha. And, and that's where I try and, you know, remove myself is as long as I'm able to tell the story the way they want it to be told, I, I've done everything that right. I can. I can't control it. I can't change anything, but I, I've done my best. Right. I love that. So you kind of answered my last question. Okay. Because I was like, how do you, how do you merge, um, your faith in the marketplace? Yeah. Right. There, and there has been some times where I'm like, I don't know if this is crossing the line. There's been stories where I've yeah. prayed with people. Wow. There, yeah, there's been, there was one story um, recently out here with a, um, a Grand Union High student. Um, something happened that I interviewed his sister mm -hmm. and she, I, I think she wouldn't, but 23, but she was like, God told me to forgive the person that killed my brother. Wow. I, but I broke into tears with her yeah. and, and i was just like you know for you to be so young and already have that understanding right. that, that you can't hang on to this yeah and, and and to forgive and and then i told her you know I, i'm praying for you i'm praying for your family and that's another thing that i'm very adamant about 
when I get that vibe from people on the yeah. story and I tell you I'm praying for you, yeah. I mean that wholeheartedly. Wow. I'm not going to forget that when yeah. I go home, when I go to pray or when I go get in that car, I'm, yeah. I am praying for you. Because yeah. it ain't nothing I can do. Right, right, <laughs> you know, right. Me telling your story is me using my talent right. to, you know, hopefully get you something. But right. above all is God. Yeah. And so I'm going to make sure he hears your story, too. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, listen, y'all. We're going to let y'all go. Yeah. We were a little bit over time, but I know we had some te technical difficulties. Thank y'all for riding with us tonight. Um, I hope that this was of a blessing. I know it was something different, something new. If you if you like it, um, throw throw some uh, some hearts in the chat. Well, we'll probably do this again. Um, I actually like this uh, this segment. I believe um, I was helped. I got some, you know, I was transparent. Yeah. Um, Danica uh, got some things out of me that I, you know she she was great. They throwing up hearts, so so that's a good thing. So uh, listen, I love you all. I want to encourage you to, uh, I am back. Uh, so if you saw the post today that our media team put up, listen, man, it was super dope, but I am back. I'm glad to be back, glad that God sustained all of us. And so listen, what I want you to do is I want you to be in prayer. We're starting a new series this Sunday, um, Stewardship, right? Uh, we're we're going to start Stewardship on Sunday. Um, you want to be a part of it. Um, it's not what you think it is. Right. How some of us think it's about money and everything. Oh, it's not. It's about uh, the whole conglomerate, what it means to be a steward. So, listen, I want you to join us as we as we get ready to close out this year. Um, meet us at 10 a.m. Invite somebody. Bring somebody with you this first Sunday. Um, remember, we are kind of switching up. Uh, so you our communion will be in the middle of service and not the end. So you want to make sure you're here on time uh, so that you can have communion with, with, with our, our savior. All right. Well, listen. I love you so much. Uh, Sister Danica, so glad to have you. So glad you were able to do this. Um, definitely will do this again. I love that. And so, uh, so listen, I'm going to say, I'm going to give you just a good old good night to everybody. Love you all. And remember to just be. Be the light. Be the love. Be the change. God bless y'all.